Hamilton Morris, Chief Communications Officer for the City of Des Moines. Welcome to City Talk. Spring is just around the corner and today's show is all about growing things that are green. First, we'll have some tips for you from Master Gardener Mark White. The Des Moines Community Action Agency is here to tell you about their spring garden program and we're going to get some gardening secrets from the Des Moines Botanical Garden. So stay tuned, City Talk will be right back. We are on location today at the Des Moines Botanical Garden. There is no place more beautiful to experience a garden than here. My guest today is Melissa Nordell Earp, who is with the Des Moines Community Action Agency, and she's going to share information with us about programs they have to assist you with getting a spring garden off the ground. Melissa, thank you so much for being our guest this morning. And thank you for inviting me. Well, first of all, tell me a little bit about what the Des Moines Community Action Agency has, uh, what it does in a project that you call your garden project. We um, have a seasonal program, as you said, called the Garden Project, and it's one of my favorite seasonal uh, programs that we offer at Des Moines Community Action Agency. And the purpose of the Garden Project is to grow food in a personal garden, helping families who are income eligible for this. Um, families um, receive a $25 gift certificate to a local Hy-Vee Garden Center where they can um, purchase uh, edible plants or seeds and vegetables to grow in their garden. Okay. Now, I'm sure you could see what we have here, some, some of the beautiful fresh produce. Can you actually grow this in your backyard garden? Yes, you can. Um, it really depends on the individual and what their preferences are. Mm -hmm. uh, in the month of March, you can actually start growing lettuce um, and some of your favorite herbs by seed, um, such as cilantro, um, dill weed, um, and I'm trying to think basil. I've started as early as um, March. And your early season crops, even carrots, you can start growing. So it really depends on the timing of the year when you start crops. But all of these are things that can be grown in your own personal garden. Well, with today's prices on fresh produce, that is a very good idea. Tell us about who's eligible for the program. There are some household guidelines. Sure. For all of our programs and services at Des Moines Community Action Agency, we do have program guidelines. Um, for the garden project, you have to be a resident of the city of Des Moines, and you have to meet income guidelines. We serve households that are 150% of federal poverty level or below. Um, so for that, a household size of one, their annual income cannot exceed $16,755. Mm -hmm. If it's a household size of four, it's $34,575. All right, now how do you apply for the program? Come to us, come see <laughs> us. Um, we are located, our site office at 1618 6th Avenue. Mm -hmm. And basically what happens is a household comes in and says they want to apply for the garden project. And we have them see a family development specialist. Um, they um, will update their information into our database and if needed, we will verify their income. If households have applied for the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, which is another program that we do, yes. um, and their household composition hasn't changed, we don't need to re-verify income. Okay. But if not, we will verify their income um, for all household members during the same time frame. And then when they're approved, we issue them $25 in gift certificates, and we do that in $5 increments for a variety of reasons. That way, if they go to Hy-Vee Garden Center, and they don't want to buy all their items at once, mm -hmm. um, or they just want to get uh, seeds right now and plant those in the month of April, they can do that and then go back. Okay. Um, most people will ask, can you apply online? Can you call in and, and complete an application? Very good questions. At this point, we do not um, accept applications online for the garden project or by phone. Now, sometimes it's uh, for households, it may be a challenge due to work uh, schedules or maybe circumstances that they can't come in. We actually have designed a proxy form that we can give to that household um, that gives them permit or they give permission to someone to act on their behalf. So with that form, hopefully that's another mechanism to prevent any challenges getting into our office to get the gift certificates. You know, this is a very worthwhile program. And these food, these food products, these vegetables are, are a very important 
part of these families' food supply, correct? Yes, and, and nutritionally, I mean, anything fresh from the garden, we've seen uh, definitely um, a shift back to doing personal gardening, um, so you can do it organically. Um, so not only for providing food, which $25 can go a long way and sustain a household um, in the growing season, it's amazing. Um, as well as I think the social connections and um, just the whole well-being of the household unit by doing a garden. Well, I know that Des Moines Community Action Agency has ways that we in the public can help. There's something that residents can contribute. What can we do if we want to contribute to this project? Well, you can always make a donation to the garden project um, specifically, and that's through Des Moines Community Action Agency. We also have a food pantry, which is one of the 13 food pantries in the um, Des Moines Area Religious Council network. Mm -hmm. uh, DMARC always welcomes congregations, um, organizations, community gardeners, or individuals to donate any of their fresh produce to DMARC, which in turn serves the food oh, pantry across okay. the city. Yeah. So um, they're always welcoming donations. Um, and. It, it is amazing how many people that access the DMARC food pantry um, appreciate and value fresh food. It, it is just, um, I hear it often. That's good to know because I don't garden as much as I used to, but there was always more than the family could eat, and, mm -hmm. and you generally try to give it to a neighbor. So this is a, this is a good place to take that excess produce. Yes, and if you would like to donate to DMARC, um, please call Becky Whitlow at 277 6969 and that's at DMARC and she can get you um, directed into the right direction and you're right gardeners are very giving and there's always excess on great growing seasons so they welcome the donations. Um, you also have classes annually there. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about the classes that you offer. Sure. We work in collaboration with the City of Des Moines, um, the Parks and Recs Department as well as the Public Library and um, the Iowa State Extension Office. So. Um, we have held for years um, a growing vegetable garden class and this year again we're very blessed to have Mark White who is a master gardener mm -hmm. um, through the Iowa State Extension Office. He'll be facilitating that um, and he's really just going to give you, he does a great job of gardening from I'm going to say A to Z and what I mean by that is um, preparing your soil, knowing what kind of sun exposure you need and how long and um, when to plant, how to plant, why to plant, and um, really maximizing the space that you have for a garden. Um, that class actually is scheduled for Thursday, April 25th from 11.30 to 1.30. And if anyone is interested in registering for that class, they can either call us at 248-6216 or go online at www.caa.dmgov.org and register. And then also we have a food preservation class that will be held in the month of June or July. And um, that has been facilitated in the past through Iowa State Extension Office. Mm -hmm. And um, that covers freezing, canning, and recipe sharing. So way to, if you do have excess, like you said, Amelia, yes. a way to store and preserve that food over the winter months to feed your family. You know, that's something I hadn't thought about for years because my parents used to do that. They would preserve things. Can and so now you can, I would have to start from zero to remember how to do that. Where are the classes held? They're going to be held at uh, the Central Library downtown. Okay. And uh, we moved them down there. They're open to the residents of the city of Des Moines. We kind of strategically did it over the lunch hour, too, to uh, try to encourage people that may be working uh, to attend those classes. And the, uh, the space and facilities are wonderful um, because uh, with a gardening class, they actually have uh, give them working space to really see how to map out their garden and the spacing because um, mm -hmm. that's part of the process. That's wonderful and these classes are, we're assuming when you say over the lunch hour so I could pop in at 12 and be done by one o'clock? It's they're ab typically about an hour and a half so um, the gardening class is 11:30 to 1. Okay yeah and those classes are free to everyone are they only for those people who qualify for the program? Well, they, we do, the purpose of it is to serve low-income individuals in the um, city of Des Moines. But these classes have expanded. Um, actually, the Des Moines Public Library announces it on their, um, their links mm -hmm. um, to residents or uh, citizens in the community. So it, it is available and class size is limited. So we do it on a first come, you know, register them until we're full. 
do we have to bring anything to this class? Or maybe just a notebook for notes, or do we need to bring anything with us? Well, not really. We usually supply some paper and also pens for people, and it's real. Um, it's very interactive. Um, it's amazing, um, as a fellow gardener, you know how we share our tips of what works and doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So not only from the uh, facilitator do you learn, but from everyone in the class. It's, it's always interesting. And um, in fact, I think you tend to learn your most, uh, your best tips from other people who have had um, great experiences or maybe not so great. And the same with canning and recipe sharing. Yeah. We've actually had people who have never canned before, which I have not. And we've had people who attended the class in the past who have canned for 15 years. Wow. So it's really, and the same for the gardening class, it's really a great mix mm -hmm. um, that they're just open and receptive to learning and sharing. Well, we're going to have to see if we can get a little clip from some of those classes yes. because those would certainly be things that a lot of our viewers would be interested in doing. Well, Melissa, thank you so much. We're just about out of time. but. Is there anything else about the Des Moines Community Action Center? Uh, nope, that's Des Moines Community Action Agency uh, that we can share with our audience uh, that would be helpful to them for the spring and summer? Um, we actually provide a lot of uh, various programs. Um, the Garden Project, upcoming classes, um, we assist clients who are in need of utilities, um, as well as upcoming summer months, we have a fan program right. and a medically needy air conditioner program. So we do a wide variety. I would suggest to uh, residents in the community, if they have an immediate need and they're not sure where to go, please call us um, and we'll be happy if we don't provide that program or service to get you to the right direction. Um, because we know there's a lot of needs out there and um, that's one of our goals to get people where they need to meet those essential needs. Thank you so much for all the great work that you do for the community and for taking time to visit with us today. Well, thank you. All right, up next we have some tips for you from the master gardener, Mark White, and later in the show we are going to share some secrets of how they grow all these beautiful plants at the Des Moines Botanical Garden. So stay with us, City Talk will be right back. County Master Gardener Mark White. It's nearly time to get into the garden and plant those early crops. Wait until the soil dries sufficiently before uh, spading or tilling. If a hand soaked full of soil formed in a ball retains its shape when it's released, it's still too wet. On the other hand, if the ball crumbles when released or when pressed by a thumb, it's ready for the spading or tilling. Tilling when wet will create clods that will be work, you'll be working with all season. Plant roots can't grow in clods or in the hard brick-like soil that results when you till when it's too wet. Garden yield will suffer. Organic matter in the form of finely chopped yard waste or compost can also be added in the spring. Organic matter helps break up clay soil and increases the soil's capacity to hold moisture and plant nutrients. This information and more can be found in Iowa State University Extension publication PM820, Garden Soil Management. The publication can be found on the City of Des Moines website on the Community Action Agency page under gardening. If you think you'd like to become a master gardener, please contact Mary Farlow at the Extension office in Altoona. Mary's phone number is 515-957-5761 or you can check us out on the Polk County Extension website. Hi, my name is Stella Adams and I'm the director of the Patricia Roberts Harris National Fair Housing Training Academy. On April 11th, 1968, in response to the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, Congress enacted the Federal Fair Housing Act, known as Title VIII. The law prohibits discrimination in housing on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, national origin, familial status, and disability. It prohibits housing providers 
from discriminating in the sale, rental, or financing of housing. If you believe you have been denied housing or housing-related services because of your race, color, religion, sex, national origin, familial status, or disability, contact your local human rights agency. Thank you. Hi, I'm Maria Flores, Program Manager with the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, also known as the EEOC. The EEOC was established in 1965. We are the key civil rights agency responsible for enforcing the federal laws which do not allow employment discrimination. It is illegal to treat someone differently because of their race, color, sex, religion, national origin, age, disability, pregnancy, and genetic information. Individuals, regardless of immigration status, have a civil right to file a complaint of discrimination with the EEOC. We will conduct a neutral investigation and attempt to provide remedy to those individuals who have been victims of employment discrimination. We will often have to litigate cases in the federal district court. Workers may contact our agency at 1-800-669-4000 to file a complaint of discrimination. We also encourage employers to contact us for proactive information to avoid employment discrimination in the workplace. For more information, you can find us at www.eeoc.gov. Thank you. how they grow all the beautiful greenery at the Des Moines Botanical Garden? Well, my next guest is going to give us some insight. His name is Kelly Norris and he is the horticulture manager here at the Des Moines Botanical Gardens. Thank you for letting us come to your beautiful home. Well, we're glad to have you here. And for giving us some of your time. Uh, first of all, there's been a lot of changes here, mm -hmm. so I'm sure our audience would like to know how things have transitioned here at the Des Moines Botanical Garden. Absolutely. Well, as of January 1st, our nonprofit took over the facility here that was formerly known as the Des Moines Botanical Center. Mm -hmm. uh, we are now known as the Greater Des Moines Botanical Garden, and we have, we have a new staff. It's a new beginning. Uh, part of the changes that I'm sure some of your viewers have, have heard about uh, include some renovations to, to the building itself. We'll have a new lobby, a new cafe, a new gift shop area, but probably the, the biggest change that's coming down the pipes in the next several years is we phase into our master plan mm -hmm. is the addition of almost 14 acres of gardens on the site wow. uh, around the existing conservatory. So we, we truly are going to become a botanical garden with both indoor plant collections and, and a really amazing outdoor garden. There's so many exciting things in Des Moines. We're really looking forward to that. Tell us a little bit about uh, programs because the, the Botanical Gardens or Center has been known for different types of programs. Will you still offer that? Yes, ma'am. We will have a variety of programs that will cater to all ages. Uh, Botanical gardens are, are cultural institutions. We, we want people to, to bring their families here. We want people to learn here. So we'll have programs that, 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 that cater to, to families uh, on the weekends, during spring breaks. Uh, we also have popular programs that have been ongoing for many years, like Learn on Saturdays, mm -hmm. which is an adult education program uh, that runs January through the end of March, featuring two lectures every Saturday from 10 until noon. Now, the, the Saturday uh, classes, is this for beginners or is this for experienced gardeners? You know, over the course of three months, there is a wide range of topics that, okay. that, that are covered from both beginning gardening uh, to more advanced and specialist topics. So there is, there's truly something for everybody on that well, schedule. Now, you know, when people come to these classes, we're going to be looking for a few of those gardening secrets because everything here is perfect and beautiful. <laughs> so I hope you're going to share some of that, maybe. Well, I, you know, when, when you come to learn on Saturdays, you're going to hear from a wide range of people. Our, our staff contribute to those series, our volunteers. We're, we're blessed with a, a very passionate core of volunteers volunteers here as well too but you know the house the space that we're in is uh, is kind of sponsored and maintained by the Polk County Master Gardeners and and they uh, invest a lot of their knowledge and their efforts from the Master Gardener program in making this this house look great uh, we also as horticulturists uh, procure plants from all over the world so we're constantly uh, trying to, to crack the code on, on on the coolest thing that we can bring to to the Des Moines audience so. well you know it's March it's it's spring, it's time to start thinking about the gardens. Yes. Can you give us a few things? What, what are the first steps that, that you do if you want to 
start thinking about planting a garden? Well, you know, as, as the temperatures warm up, and, and hopefully sooner than later as, as, <laughs> as spring starts to come upon us, you know, you, you want to get out there and, and wake the garden up. The garden will be waking up but before you probably get out there. The earliest spring bulbs, the snowdrops, mm -hmm. our hellebores mm -hmm. are, are, are going to already be up and blooming uh, th this month and, mm -hmm. and into, into April. And, uh, you know, we want to we tidy up the garden. If you didn't do it in the fall, if you like to let your garden rest with a nice blanket of, of, of warm cover and leaves, okay. uh, you want to get out there and, and, and get your hands dirty and, and, uh, and wake the garden up. So. Okay. Well, uh, tell us a little bit more about um, plants. I mean, when you, we are in something that's new itself, tell us a little bit about the room we're in, and we'll show people a little bit of what this looked like. It's absolutely beautiful. Well, this 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 space is uh, uh, the the it, the space itself has existed, but this exhibit is is new. The, the Polk County Master Gardeners changes their exhi change their exhibits four times a year. Mm -hmm. uh, we're currently in a mysteries exhibit. They're okay. exploring uh, the different interpretations of of mysteries, both in in, in movies and and in literature, uh, through the medium of plants here. Uh, so w everything's constantly growing here. We're, we're we're not a static institution. Gardens grow, and okay. so there's always something in bloom. There's always something new to come out and see. Uh, our Conservatory beds uh, we we think as art uh, think of as art exhibits, and so we have uh, a new concept that we explore every every few months. Uh, here in in March, uh, our exhibit is called Coffee House Regular, and we're featuring <laughs> plants that are are coffee colored, are toffee colored, okay. cappuccino colored, and exploring a color palette that some people may not know exists in plants. Now this room is is off of the big dome that everybody yes. is familiar That's with. That's right. It, it's open to the public. Yes, it is. It's and, open to the public. And what do we call this room? This is the Gardener's Show House. Okay. This is the Gardener's Show House. And, and make sure you come around the orchid wall when you come in and, <laughs> and sneak back here to see what's going on. Uh, people come through here. You you want some of these beautiful plants. Absolutely. Does the botanical garden still sell plants? Because they used to. We, we surely do. There will okay. be plant sales uh, throughout uh, the, the spring and, and into the summer uh, in, in the lobby featuring things that you can see right here in, in the show house and in the conservatory so you can walk away with a, a living souvenir of your experience. <laughs> and probably the only thing that will be alive in my garden. <laughs> um, things have changed, but what about admission? Is there still an admission? Yep, we're, we, it is, uh, admission is $5 for adults mm -hmm. and uh, $4 for, for seniors, and uh, we're, we certainly uh, uh, want families to, to, to come out and, and see what we're doing. We're open uh, seven days a week from, from 9 to 5. Okay. Um, there used to be rental space. Yes. Has that changed? No, not at all. We, we are still open for, for weddings and for meetings. This is a great place to come and, and, and host your group, uh, regardless of what it is. Our, our, our facilities and rentals folks in the front office can, can surely help you set those things up. We, we love to have people here. It's, a garden is a growing place, and people are a part of that. So, I know we have the classes, but you, you said that um, in addition to what we see in the, in mm -hmm. the center, there are going to be some gardens outside. Yes, yes. Can you give us a little sneak Oh, absolutely. Peak of what we can look forward we're to. We're going to have future? we're going to have some really great gardens out there. Probably one of the biggest changes that people are going to notice uh, first right away here in March is the closure of Robert D. Ray Drive, which will will accommodate allow us to uh, uh, accommodate that space uh, more appropriately with with gardens. So in the right off the, the building uh, will be a almost half an acre water garden. Uh, it'll be a wonderful, wonderful space to to teach about water gardening plants and to just be immersed in the uh, the serene nature of water. We'll also have a celebration lawn that will be surrounded by a very effusive blousy perennial border it will be uh, a really great space that will be packed with plants and, and you'll be surrounded and kind of transported to a very lush tapestry that, that you might not otherwise find in in an Iowa garden so there's going to be a, a, a sort of backbone alley uh, that goes along the uh, uh, parallels the river. The, the LA has uh, uh, will be a promenade of trees that you can have cocktail parties under. It'll be uh, it'll be a wonderful space. We can't wait. Certainly, all of these plans are exciting. Kelly, can you give us a sneak preview? Are there any artist renderings? Uh, you can you can go on our website uh, and and see the the master plan as it is currently conceived. You can see also some snapshots and previews of what the new interiors of the building are going to look like. Uh, that website is dmbotanicalgarden.com. Uh, a new website will be coming up here, and and will be uh, you'll be able to see those plans and kind of previews of what we hope those spaces will look like. I want to circle back just a little bit about the classes because I'm very interested in trying to have a green thumb. Absolutely. It's kind of brown, but you know we're working <laughs> on the green. 
these classes on Saturdays, uh, are these classes free? Uh, the classes are discounted for members. If you're a member of the institution, it's, it's $5. If, if, if you're not, it's $10. But you're getting a chance to sit through, through two hours of really, really great information uh, by, by local experts, and, and uh, it's, it's well, worth the, well worth your $10. Now, do I need to bring anything, my gardening gloves, tools, anything it's, at all? These are more done as in a classroom setting uh, okay. in, in the winter, so uh, we do, we'll have other opportunities throughout the growing season for folks to, uh, to get their hands dirty and, and, and build some things and dig around in the dirt. But, but through the end of March, our Learn on Saturdays are uh, classroom style uh, lectures that take place uh, from 10 to 12. Okay, well as we wrap up, there used to be volunteer opportunities. Yes. For those who love gardening, they could come here and do some things. So those opportunities still There available. are still lots of volunteer opportunities. Our new volunteer coordinator, Susan Corey, is happy to talk with, with anybody with, with any skill set and experience level. We, we Again, we're, we're blessed by the volunteer support that we have and we're, we're open uh, and encouraging to folks who, who want to come uh, give of their time to, to make this uh, place a more beautiful space. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. It sounds really exciting. Thank you. You're doing a really wonderful job. Thank here. you. We're looking forward to it. That wraps up this edition of City Talk. We hope you will join us again at the dates and times now listed on your television screen. DMTV is brought to you by the City of Des Moines and it is offered free of charge by Mediacom Cable. Please watch us online at www.dmgov.org or you can find us on YouTube on the address on the screen. I'm Amelia Hamilton Morris. Thank you for watching.